All right, time for another exercise here. Uh, this is just a note to myself. Uh, here we go. This exercise is going to combine for loops and ranges along with uh, a little bit of conditional logic. So it's more complex than what we just did. So the idea is that you're going to loop through... Why did I do this? I don't know why I put that on a separate... That might be an accident. Anyway, you're going to loop through the numbers 1 through 20. And for each, I should mention it's inclusive. So it includes 20 and 1. And you're going to loop through them. And you're going to go through each. And if the number is 4 or the number is 13, you're going to print X is unlucky. Uh, so 13, at least in the U.S., is considered unlucky. And I know 4 is unlucky in Chinese culture. Um, so if there's another unlucky number in your culture between 1 and 20, print X is unlucky for it. And if the number is even, print X is even. If the number is odd, print X is odd. So the results should look like this. 1 is odd, 2 is even, 3 is odd, 4 is unlucky. You don't have to do all caps. 5 is odd, 6 is even, so on. 13 is unlucky, down to 20 is even. And we only do one thing for each number. So, you know, 4 is both unlucky and even, but we only print out unlucky. We don't print out the even part. Okay, so give it a shot. The numbers 1 through 20, including 20. I'll do another pause video. Where is that thing? Come on, pause the video. Oh, there we go. And in like three seconds, I'll be back. And surprise, I'm back. So let's go ahead and make a new file. This one I'll just call, uh, I don't know, numbers.py. Maybe you can come up with something better. And we're going to start by just printing the numbers 1 through 20. So we're going to do for num in a range. And the range that we want is from 1 to 20. But remember, that's exclusive, so it doesn't include 20. So if we just printed num just like this, and do python3 numbers.py, it goes from 1 to 19. So we need to add 1 here and go to 21. And make sure that works. 1 through 20. Okay, so now all we're going to need to do is add a bit of conditional logic. So we can start off with even and odd. And if you don't remember how to figure out if something is even uh, in Python, we need to use modulo, the percent sign. So that's also the remainder operator. So any even number, like 4 or 6, when we mod 2, when we divide by 2, there should be no remainder, meaning 4 mod 2 is 0. So whatever the num is, if it's divisible by 2, that number percent 2 is going to be 0. So we can add a conditional. So if the number divided or the number divided by 2 has no remainder, that means it's even. So we can start with this. And we'll just do print. And let's do an f string. num is even. And let's just start there. Make sure that that's working. Okay, so we get 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, all the way down to 20 is even. None of the odds are printing out. So we could just add a simple else, and I'll just copy this line here and replace it with odd, because there's only one choice. If you're not even, you're going to be odd. And if I do this now, we get 1 is odd, 2 is even, all the way down. So the last thing we have to add is making sure that 4 and 13 are printed out as unlucky. And what we want to do there is basically just check, is the number equal to 4, or is it equal to 13? And we could, we could add an elif like this, um, and, or we could do a separate if statement. Maybe we'll start with that. Let's do a separate if, and we'll just say if num is equal, equal to 4, or num is equal to, what was the other one, 13? Then we'll print, and I'll just copy this again num is unlucky. And if we ran this now, what do you think we'll see? Well, what we actually get is 4 is even and 4 is unlucky. Or we get 13 is odd and 13 is unlucky. We don't want that. So we can't have this be a separate if statement. And we can't put it as an elif because if we did an elif, uh, well, we'll see what happens now. Let me just modify that and just paste it in. You can probably imagine what's going to happen. It will work one time, but it won't work the other. So you can see that for 4, we get 4 is even, but we don't get 
4 is unlucky. But for 13, we get 13 is unlucky. What's happening is that it's going in order. So the first thing it checks is the number even. So in the case of 4, it is even. So it prints this one. And because these are elifs and else's, they don't run unless the first one is false. So in the case of 13, which is not even, this is false, then this is true. So what we want to do is just move this check up top and do this first. That's the special case that we were going to check first. And then we'll check if it's even. And we could have gone the other way around uh, and checked for odd first, where num mod 2 would need to be equal to 1. The remainder by uh, mod, modding by 2 on an odd number is always 1. Okay, let's see. Now we get 1 is odd, 2 is even, 3 is odd, 4 is unlucky, all the way down to 13 is unlucky, down to 20 is even. Everything looks good. Okay, so we're looping through numbers. We had to adjust this to be 21 because it's exclusive. So that's how we get 1 to 20. Uh, also, we needed to be very careful about the order we put these statements in, or at least the first one, because something like 4 is both unlucky and even, or 13 is both unlucky and odd. We only want the unlucky to print out. If you got this far, great, that's the solution. But there's a, there's a change we could make, uh, and it's really a matter of opinion if you think that this is better or not. But I'm gonna just uh, comment that out and duplicate this. And the change that, the thing that some people might uh, take issue with is how we have three different print statements. And they're basically doing the exact same thing. They're printing out num, is, and then some status or some you know state for num. So it follows the same pattern. So what we could do instead is just have one print statement at the end and make a variable like state or status or type. And we don't even need to declare it first. We could just do this. Um, if num is 4 or num is 13, we'll say state equals unlucky. If it's even here, if num mod 2 is 0, we'll say state is even. And then finally, we'll say state is equal to odd. Then we'll outdent the print statement and we'll edit it so that it prints, oops, that it prints num is state. So it assigns a state variable to be either unlucky, even, or odd. And then at the end, outside of the conditional, still in the loop, we're going to print the number three is state, which would be odd in that case. And if we run this one, we get the exact same result. So it's really a matter of opinion. Some people might gauge their code by how short it is. So in this case, you know, this is an extra line. But uh, if you look at our print statements, there's so much less duplication. This one is kind of following a, a cookie cutter pattern. And anytime you see that, that's often a place where you can refactor your code, make it a little bit better. So this is my personal preference, but it doesn't mean that it's um, necessarily better. It is really a matter of opinion. They both work, and neither of them is clumsy or hideous, aside from the fact that they don't do anything useful, and it's a uh, really silly exercise. Okay.